Okay, so I'm watching, uh, honestly, I'm watching Aaron Ra's Pistis video. And like I said, I'm going to do a full accounting of it when I finish it. Hopefully I'll finish it sometime this week. I don't have a lot of time this week. But, you know, i got to do a brief little aside because it, it's just too funny. I mean, he trots out this theologian on the channel. I mean, come on, man. He trots, trots out. Here, yes, I brought this theologian, Dan Barker. Oh, okay. You know, and then he goes to him, basically, okay, you're a great theologian, right, Dan Barker? Yeah, okay. Tell me what I want to hear. Tell me what I want to hear. I mean, honestly, I'm not trying to nickel and dime Aaron Ron. I'm really not. You know, that's not my that's not my jam. I don't do that. But that's a little bit much. I mean, come on. That's a little funny. I mean, imagine if Michael Michael Jones. First of all, everyone knows Dan Barker is a famous atheist. Yes, he can be a theologian. Yes, he could have studied theology. And yes, famous atheists can probably be expert theologians. Matter of fact, I've done a video on it. Haven't posted it yet about how atheists can be good theologians. They just got to, you know, act as if God is real. But that's for another day. But come on, man. I mean, think about it. Think about it if Michael Jones, okay? Michael Jones said, and to back up my case, I brought this expert on atheism on board. <laughs> you know? William Lane Craig. Welcome to my channel. <laughs> William Lane Craig. Yeah, he's an expert on atheism. And he goes, okay, William Lane Craig, tell me what I want to hear. That's more or less what went down. And it's a little bit absurd. But, okay, barring that, I want to address the, 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 the thing that Dan Barker, the great theologian, actually said. Because he said something that a lot of atheists believe. Even in the comment section, one atheist goes, I'm so glad you said this. I'm so gleeful when you said it. And he said, what did he say exactly? Something along the lines. This is a lot of atheists say this. It's a common atheist talking point. Okay, something along the lines of, if this were really the word of God, do we, don't you think it'd be easier to understand? Don't you think, doesn't the fact that there's so many people quibbling over this means that and who have different views and interpretations and wildly different understandings of it, doesn't that kind of show you that it's not the word of God? Because if it were the word of God and this God is omnipotent, don't you think it'd be really, really clear and easy to understand? No. <laughs> no, I don't. That's a that's a that's an astonishingly fallacious atheist talking point. Mostly, what atheists do with talking points is anything you deem to be a true thing about religious phenomena, you just put it in service of atheism. So yeah, there's thousands of people who disagree about what the Bible means. Therefore, there isn't a God, or it can't be the Word of God. Actually, the Bible itself. The reason why I wanted to address this because this is. Not only is this astonishingly fallacious, but the Bible itself is pretty crystal clear that it hasn't been designed that way. Hasn't been designed that way. It's been designed two ways. Okay? There are certain scriptures in the Bible that are crystal clear, relatively easy to understand, and almost every atheist knows what those scriptures are. And if you just click on Twitter... You'll, and you go to a Christian Twitter feed, you'll see 50 of those scriptures, and they don't require a theologian. Everybody understands what they mean. Love your neighbor as yourself. Anybody, do you need to consult a theologian as to what that means? No, you don't. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Do you need to consult a theologian to see what that means? No, you do not. So there are two types of scriptures in the Bible. Really, really simple, easy to understand instructions, which everybody gets. And what? Really, really obscure passages that even a great theologian like I, Craig Reed, <laughs> you, know, you don't think I'm a great theologian? Okay, well, you know, I tried to put it over on you. Oh, it didn't work. All right. Even a great theologian like myself, I, Craig Reed, greatest theologian of all time, if I do say so myself, could and not, cannot ferret out the meaning of. There's a lot of passages like that. And I'm pretty sure they are designed to be obscure. Bible itself explicitly says, this is not written for everybody to understand. Even says outright, I will, the wisdom of the wise, I will confound the wisdom of the wise. Meaning, the type of people that Aaron Ra thinks are, you know, really, really important, profound thinkers. The Bible is deliberately designed to, to confound them. That's point one. Point two, it also tells you, except that you become as little children, you shall not enter in. In, under, in other words, there is a type of passage in the Bible 
that is relatively easy to understand. For what? For little children. Aaron himself has probably, on the numerous occasions, called the Bible a book of fairy tales. Probably. It is a book of fairy tales. What are, what are fairy tales designed for? For little children. For little children to be able to understand. While the big, the big scary adults don't get it. The Bible tells you it's written like that. In a sort of secret code. That only the pure of heart can really have access to. The Bible says this clearly. It's designed to thwart big, pompous intellectual types who are going, you know, ah, well, passage, clear, the exodus of passage 6 clearly indicates, you know, <laughs> that when Paul was saying that, that they're deliberately designed to thwart that type of understanding. And then there are passages in the Bible that even I myself, the great theologian Craig Reed, cannot understand and don't even necessarily try. I read other people's interpretations of those passages and I'm not completely satisfied that they're right. What I think the, the really obscure passages, like for example Matthew 10, does this whole thing on Jesus is the door and it seems to me, I've never read any interpretations that, that back this up, but it seems to me like he's talking about that there are other religions out there that he's the sheep and there. I, I don't know exactly what Matthew 10 means to this day. So I don't jump to and try and interpret it. But I've read a whole bunch of people who have tried to interpret it and never satisfied that they're right. Ezekiel, totally obscure. There are passages of Ezekiel, totally obscure. What they mean, I have no clue. And nor did, not, neither does anybody else. I swear to God, nobody does. I'm convinced. Now, I could be wrong about this, but I'm convinced that those, those really obscure passages of the Bible are designed that way on purpose. That you, the, the point is you're supposed to prayerfully consider it. Not study, necessarily. You're supposed to intellectually study it, yes. The Bible says, you know, study and be approved. So study, study, study. But you're supposed to intellectually... You're so, the intellectual is only one, one facet of your understanding. More important, or just as important, is you're supposed to prayerfully consider. And you're supposed to bring your life experience to bear and all the wisdom that you possess to bear. And you're supposed to pray your little face off about understanding those passages. And then maybe, just maybe, just maybe, you might get a glimmer of understanding about it. I'm convinced that the book of Job is like that. Convinced that nobody really understands it. And that you read a bunch of interpretations and you prayerfully consider all of them. And then you think about evil in the world. And then you think about suffering in the world. And then you go back and read it again. And then you bring your own life experience to bear while you prayerfully consider the content. And then one day, if you humble your heart, maybe, just maybe, you get some glimmer of understanding about what it's about. I'm 100% convinced that that's, that's the way the, the, a lot of parts of the Bible are designed to be read. Those two types. Easy to understand, easy to follow admonitions for little kids. For obedient little good little boys and girls. Deliberately trying to thwart the understanding of someone like Aaron Ra. Calling him a scoffer, outright. In the last days there will be scoffers. He's calling him a scoffer, outright. Calls him by name, a scoffer. It's deliberately designed to be... To, to go, I can't believe idiots believe this stuff. Thwart you. And then it teaches them, the, the little children, in secret code that only they can pick up. Why? Because they're pure of heart. He who has clean hands and pure of heart. Now, I could be wrong about that, but that's how it appears to me. Um, I'll give you an example from the real world. Will I? No. No, I won't. <laughs> no, I won't. Don't ask me for an example. I will not. <laughs> um, I think that's relatively clear what I just said. If it, you know, I'll listen back to it, and if it's not relatively clear, I'll, I'm sure I'll go back to that subject somewhere in the future. I just wanted to make that quick little aside, so, you know, because I think that's common. A lot of atheists talk about that, so... There you go. That is all on the subject for now. The great Dan Barker, the great theologian Dan Barker, you know... I, I disagree with his assessment of whether scripture should be easy to understand or not. So that is all. Mass has ended. That is all for now, kids. Mass has ended. Go in peace. Amen.